Does anybody actually have an idea what they're doing? I'm not so sure. I try to bring all this stuff behind the woodshed to let you know that there's things to do, there lots of things to choose. No, nothing set for, set in stone because that what there is to do depends on what you set your mind to fix. If you don't set your mind to fix something, there's no capacity even to begin. Uh, I've reduced all my studies down to realizing all that I know, uh, all that I've figured out or learned or what I thought I figured out and, and put in practice. Uh, it really reduces down all that all that I have, only only certain amounts of information are needed at any one time, depending on the task. I tend myself to hit a pretty comprehensive uh, realm of things. But I know that I don't need everything I know. Now, that said, it certainly comes in handy that everything I know has been, if you will, um, collated and put in places of understanding. And I've been become, because of the nature of what we're up against, I've, I've made that a fluid knowledge, a, and a knowledge that I can adjust as I need to, pull up as I need, prioritize as I need, all relative to the task at hand. And before I forget, the task at hand is to tell you this is VTW RLM 268. Well, I hope I get these numbers right. BTWRLM268. And um, that'll give you the content links that uh, I, I would hope that you would re read uh, more on, on when I'm talking about things to give you, uh, as I say, there's evidence in this notice. They call it the news. I, call, I look at it as notice. When you understand that the media, for the most part, is uh, government contractors, you realize the media is giving you the notice of what it wants you to know. It doesn't mean it's the truth. It doesn't mean it's not the truth. It just is. And so we have to learn to discern. And I say that we got to take that a little bit further, not just to be receptive, big sponges. We have to do something with it. And again, I can't stress this enough. I wouldn't tell you this if it wasn't really what you need. There's so much information. As the the days get later and later in our in our watching this reality come a new reality the new normal a deviance come on us hanging back and try to get more knowledge than until it's enough is is not going to work it really will not and so you find out again find something you need to make right you can make just start getting back into practice if you will just start take a light duty job on something you just want to and just go work it out and you have to. Be fluid on how that will work. We've I've worked with enough people over quite a few years here, and actually working and trying to work it through. Uh, to say uh, you go do something isn't necessarily so easy to do. It doesn't mean that because we say it has to be done that it. In fact, it might have come out in the chat. It's it's a con all these concepts are consistent. It may it may it may be the thing to do. It didn't mean that it was easy to do. And, and and we've let this thing go, so there's really, a, if we had any thought about it at all, it, it's a responsibility in us to maintain how we are, are here, let alone try to get it to a place that's not being moved into places that we didn't agree. And you're having, you're in, in validity in response, so you're even the inconsequential responses that happen really aren't aren't really going to cut it. Uh, I don't know what else to say. It's pretty simple. I, I try to bring my insights here, uh, looking through, uh, and I really it's time out of my mind uh, how I understand this. It's all the stuff you when you sit and realize what's going on and let it come, what kind of wash over you, and then the inspiration you have from doing all that, and then getting out and working with this stuff and watching how that. The creature, the beast, responds to you or doesn't. I think I've learned more about how it, when it doesn't respond, the omission I keep telling you about is so important to listen for if you can discern what that is. Uh, it's ex instructed me on certain things. Uh, again, if 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 it wasn't a problem, I wouldn't. We wouldn't be looking at it. You wouldn't be here. You wouldn't be. We wouldn't have the problems that we have. We wouldn't be thinking that there was a problem. And then we wouldn't also throw our hands up like we can't really do anything about it. But I think I think there is. I, I think you just have to decide to do it. There's a, everyone has their capacities and their skills, and uh, we've run up against enough walls 
And I'm kind of responding to the broadcast uh, two hours before, and you see why. Uh, Ron Steffens rocked the boat. He was talking about with Chris about how, how to get stuff done. Well, you just got to keep, if you find a dead end or you find a brick wall, you, you dig underneath it, you find the end of it, you climb over it, you, you build up another wall to jump, you can build up and you jump over it. You do what you have to do. Sometimes it's not so direct. As I was putting in the chat room to try and show that there's a little bit more to this game, if it is such a game, it's our lives. People are trying to take it from us in our way of life and trying to disquiet us, get, take us out of the peace that we were uh, was to be protected uh, in us. Uh, we we find it may not be a direct route. And as I was communicating, I've got a colleague who decided to take on uh, what well he had that question, and it happened to be it just happened to be the administrative side destruction of your life. And it's something I've been researching for decades as well. I had a good handle on it, but I didn't get into every nook and cranny. Well, this guy wanted to get into every nook and cranny. And so I guided him to, I told you, the path. I can give you the path that you need to go down, and I'll tell you what I found when I went there, and then you go dig it up. You go figure out, because that's your specialty. And, well, he's done that. Okay, so then he has some knowledge. And I said, well, I told you, knowledge is not the not the power. It's putting it in practice. And so we... I had him take that knowledge and take it to someone, and I got to be careful on what I say here. Uh, take it to somebody who was receptive but didn't understand that, and I explained what the resistance was and how uh, that would to be worked out. And my colleague's not an, an unintelligent guy, so he was able to work that out himself and see it and work through it, and we were able to go around a resistance built into somebody uh, we needed to have as an ally. Someone on our side. It was on our side. It wasn't that it wasn't. People build walls again. We, we divide ourselves. And once we uh, made that, well, uh, we made that uh, that connection. It's now been over a five-year process of educating the wider public. Because that one we were trying to work with that we knew would, would be conducive to the information once he saw it, he's got a bigger following. He's got a big, a big platform that he, he can speak through. And so it's taken five more years beyond that, once we work that out, in order to get the populace to be understanding the conditions they're watching that they didn't understand were going on. Like I tell you, the things that are transparent through this process, of we've been able to get more of the pop of a, of a population understanding this transparency and how it's affecting their life adversely. That inspired someone to run for an office. That office, uh, that office holder now is able to work with uh, information that they're, we help them with and on their own merit, fantastic amount of energy, uh, are making a difference as well in an office. And so it takes all types of people doing all kinds of things. And you may have to set the foundation before it even starts to work. As I've said before, an, um, an official with a decision and the law are a majority. And so my view has been kind of tailored where I would have thought you had to take a majority I'm finding out because the system is not in law for the, uh, a lot of times. In particular on this land disposal, this is where, I, I mean, maybe a different thing, because this land disposal is pretty, it's all before the government. It's all uh, uh, an, uh, an obligation and duty of the government. We don't have to worry about it, uh, what's your opinion on it. And so there might be a little difference in distinction on certain other areas, but not in these areas. And these are pretty comprehensive. They happen to touch every, every aspect of your life. Your land, your water, your food, your highways, your everything. So, well, everything that's functional in your life, uh, and so we're pretty comprehensive. So we now have some power. It, it didn't come directly. It didn't come by running for office and getting in and making decisions or, or that. It, it came by looking at a population area and saying, "How are we going to best put the message out there to build people up in their knowledge so they can turn around and start and working with it?" Again, it's not knowing something; it's doing something with what you know. And it's been a long ho ro road a hoe here. So we've been doing quite a bit of hoeing uh, as we move through the, the field, planting seeds, and hoping that the, the, the things sprout. you got to just put your, put, let Mother Nature take its course after someone knows, and you put your time and energy into the best that you can find. Anyway, so I don't know. I'm kind of convers having a conversation with myself over the last discussion where it got a little uh, contentious about what was going on, but this is not a direct route. This is, uh, I'm finding, it's, you have to be, again, it's a battle. You have to figure out how to gain your objective. And if one way's uh, uh, resistant, you have to find another way. 
it, one answer is not going to fit the bill for everyone. And uh, but but the the answer that has to be met is the the the, the certitude that has to be met is that you have to do something directly against the problem. Your path to that might be indirect, but it, you have to eventually affect those that are causing the problem. And uh, so, and in my my position, I'm looking into the future, if you will, to see, you know, I guess there's lots of people that want to present how they're, you know, they're trends forecasters and this and that. I suppose I could say I do that. I could suppose I can say I'm I'm a bit of an oracle. I can suppose maybe that's why I was on Oracle Broadcasting for a while. I can say that I am a, I'm quite a, quite knowledgeable in these areas that can foretell the future. But it's none of that, folks. The plan has been coming through, and it's been a repetitious plan that's on us for hundreds of years, if not millennia. And then, more particularly, within the last couple decades, maybe four decades, five decades, but more particularly to what is affecting us directly. We've identified, my colleagues, myself and my colleagues, have identified how all that works. Now it's just a matter of getting people to imply it. And so that's been the problem. And that's why I keep coming every week, ask you, find something you want to make right. Uh, that's the only way to start. You're only going to need to know the knowledge that you need. Uh, then there's people outside, hopefully like myself and others, that have been researched more deeply in this. Um, in fact, if I, if you wanted to ask me on the inner inner workings of the method of the mechanisms for whom and how and what on certain administrative side destructions, I would refer you to someone else than myself uh, because that's my colleague who's done that research. He'll tell you exactly how to go about looking for this kind of thing and uh, how, to, how, to, um, how to expose it. And then we have our techniques on, on and, and then it takes time in order to expose these things. And the population starts to understand they've been duped, essentially, and how they've been duped. So, and it's all written in documents. We don't even really produce the documents. It's all out there for these uh, these uh, dupers uh, that are that are taking taking us down. And so, it, it, it's just a matter of engaging. And it's only in a matter you'll again. My colleague that does this uh, policy consensus, uh, he has done a whole lot more reading anymore, and particularly on on particular projects that are being foisted on the public and at the taxpayer's expense. That that's the rip-off plunder part. That's how they fund it, the leverage funding. That's how I knew about it. This is now speaking more not I knew this before, but it's qualified by Clint Richardson's work of the CAFR. That's just a small peephole actually of what's going on in past because you only see one year. So that's why, you know, Clint's work was very valuable. It it was just fun- focusing all the stuff I had figured out was going on but didn't have the time myself to go research in those areas and find them again everyone has their power so once we were able to see that that disqualified what I'd already seen uh, within the context of how they take down a people that's you folks the people is you and this is a global thing and I don't know if every nook and cranny of the world but they're working on it uh, but but locally you can stop this and so I guess I'm speaking a little bit long on the pro- on a, a broadcast you didn't hear uh, but what do you do? You know, run for office. What do you do? Well, sometimes you're not good for office. I wouldn't be good for office, uh, but I can certainly um, strategize and, and give information and help people that are good at promoting those that can get in office. That's a two-step back. And, you know, it's taken, we've been doing this for five or six years. In that particular line, notwithstanding everything else that I, I, I get involved with uh, here and there, uh, but in that particular line, I, my place is not on the front end of that spear. And and so we all have to find our place and and our contribution, and we've been I think we're being pretty successful. Have you seen any uh, standout things? Well, maybe maybe not. Uh, I'm not going to talk about much of it, but uh, there's things working underneath the system in the skin that are so subtle that I don't think people would appreciate it anyway. But they're there, and we know that. And so and we try to work it out from there, the ripple effect, if you will. We try to take it out. That's the local local, then you got the state local, and then you got the you know, your uh, maybe multi state local and then you actually have and then you have your, your national. And so there's many places that uh, potentially that anybody has a particular talent to fit in to offer what they do really well. Anyway, so uh, voting is one thing, uh, running for office is another, but there's a whole thing inside that. It may not be it, again, it took years uh, to get people to be inspired enough to run for an office that they then jumped in with the knowledge that they could be given that got them on the more correct path that started to do something. 
And if it wasn't for that one running for that office, it wouldn't be happening. If it wasn't for the ones that we could talk to in offices and show them what was going on that was causing harm to their county and that they were more likely to uh, to feel uh, receptive to helping the people of the county, not the government of the county necessarily for the government's sake or the state's sake or whatever other special interest when they felt for the people. Those few commissioners that we've been able to talk to, they've done very well as well. So we just got to get people in the offices, but we also need the support structure. And that's why I've been asking any one of you, anywhere, whatever you do, start to tie in. However, you really have to, though you can't talk about that you're making the effect, you have to really get it to be where it's making an effect on a, influencing a decision. Now, what do I say influence? Influence is what the other side does. You can only influence somebody. That's also the proper way to uh, to allow an insight to someone, and if they have the decision and you don't, and that's the way the structure is made, you have to give that to them. You can't just think you have a decision. Uh, you, you can't insult that either. So this is start start, starting to rebuild our diplomacy and statesmanship between ourselves as well. Anyway, so there's a whole methodology. What I wanted to point out here is my, uh, le- my uh, warnings to you and my reasons about how this new future is coming out, and you're seeing it now pretty clearly. I don't even know that anybody can't uh, can't see that the effect, see the parts and pieces if they don't understand how it's been tied together. One of this thing that we've been watching is this cashless society, which is now developing through this Bitcoin that just didn't that blossom up pretty fast. Uh, and it's pretty fascinating when you watch the dynamic that it's all it we've been working underneath and now it's blossoming and now they're trying to get you to uh, to into it. I told you the speculation was part of it. If they make it a, a game, then you're going to put a lot of energy into it. And what they do is they get you to work out their problems for them. Well. I'm not the only one that has almost this identical view of the danger of what Bitcoin is. Not not Bitcoin by name. It's a it's a it's a technology. It's a, more the blockchain. It's more what they do around it. You know, I've explained a lot of this. Well, if you didn't, if you wanted a concurring opinion or not or whatever, you want to hear someone else say it. Someone who has a whole lot more notoriety than I do. I just uh, was given a, a link. I think of Gary L. Pass this on to me. Uh, Catherine Austin Fitz talks with the dark journalists about this Bitcoin thing. And she tells me on the video that she did 100 hours, 100 hours of due diligence, studying, asking experts, checking into what this thing is and what really is it and looking at it through her viewpoint from being an officer of some official in the government who then got ostracized. I, mean, I don't know if she's been a whistleblower or not, but uh, she's not not very well liked uh, apparently about about what she did to expose what was going on. She has some very intelligent insights on stuff. Well, she looked at the hundred hours of study, folks, a dedicated, high level, uh, dedicated Bitcoin look. And I want you. To, I'll give you a link in the blogcaster. You can check it out yourself. It's a, one of the more current uh, videos on YouTube. Uh, she will tell you essentially what I've said. Uh, and so if, if if you don't understand, I mean, I didn't put in 100 hours of due diligence. This happened to tie to my research and then how that was coming on and what it would have to do more than than that it that it uh, that it met any any real depth economic depth research in depth research on the on the effects. This is just how it would work. Uh, well, if you need a second opinion, I would ask you to go listen to that. I could not find much of any difference between the way she has said the problem with this Bitcoin. She also agrees it, it would be a, a tool, and she also agrees that uh, essentially we, we would have to keep it out of the hands of those that would eventually control it, that this is not a decentralizing condition. Uh, she really says pretty much everything I have said in the past. I, I If you need to hear it from someone else, I need you to hear what she has to say about it. Uh, I think what she says is, is, is right on. I mean, exact, and she also says that you have to work local. So if you're not going to hear it from me, go hear it from her. If you respect her more, uh, then then you might respect me. What am I? Who am I behind the woodshed? Got two, two listeners a, a week on the on the YouTube's. Who cares, right? Well, she doesn't. She's well organized. She's got a lot of people work with her. They got people that inv- invest their time to invest in in her in her efforts, and she's the spokeswoman for that effort. Uh, and so that's how we need to be working. She says work local, but you have to understand what you're up against. So her words now or no, I don't hear in this video, are no different than what I've been saying. Why am I telling you that? 
folks, because there's now more two witnesses as to what you need to do. Two witnesses make a fact, whether you want to agree with it or not. It's what you're going to have to do that is going to be relevant, that you have to look at the battlefield. As she'll say a little different. Uh, she talks about it in economic terms. Uh, you have to essentially make uh, lay out the condition on, on economics, and you follow the money, essentially, and look at the real core of things, and you're going to find out how to approach the problem. Again, it's not going to be an instant answer, but you at least have a thing to do, not just talk about and not whine about, but do. So I encourage you to read that, uh, listen to that, that tape, uh, excuse me, that program um, with the dark journalist. Catherine Austin Fitz describes uh, the problems with Bitcoin. And I am asking you, and she talks about the, about the uh, all, all about this. She talks about the fact that it's in a condition right now. It's like the wild, wild west. It's all in speculation. They want you to do that. I've told you they want you to do that. They need you to, people to work out the problems for the, the, the centralization problem. They don't. It'll be taken from those that are done. It'll be condemned where it's not useful for the system, and it'll be advan- make an advantage to those that it is. And uh, this is coming. This is the same uh, story over and over, and she'll tell you exactly about that. So, uh, uh, just appreciated hearing the, the second her analysis, 100 hours of due uh, due diligence, and she comes up with the same answer I did. You, you, folks, there's two witnesses here. I don't think I'm uh, too slouchy on what I'm trying to tell you here. Do I? And she agrees. It's not something we run from, but we're going to have to have a whole lot better understanding of it than just to throw in. Uh, she would not be the sponsor of a coin at this point. And she finds the same uh, infirmities that, if not, and well, the same ones that I do. And there's others she didn't even talk about, and I just assume that just for the sake of the broadcast, she can only, you know, again, you can only talk about so much. So, uh, folks, this is a word to the wise, and this is the word uh, to those that are, have an ear to hear and eye to see on how we're going to step on through this, because we are going to find those walls. There's wall. We're living inside an open air prison, folks. I mean, come on, you got to just, you're going to find the wall. But what, are you going to be a creative enough in order to get around that wall? Is the question. And and, and you, there's a whole lot about all that. It's a nutshell little statement. It means nothing in some regard, uh, but uh, it means everything. Because if you're not going to not going to step up uh, you, again, you just become the whiner. It, you're just going to watch this stuff come down on us, and uh, it's not a, a pretty sight. Now, so local is the way, and we have multiple levels of local and. State is like third step up. First, local is you. You get active, and you then find something to go do. That may that brings you in context with the next local, and then maybe there's a little bigger local than that. It will eventually get to your state, the local so-called state, and uh, that that um, uh, may have force and effect. Again, we work on multiple levels, trying to get people into places that become a seat of decision that can make make something happen that will not happen if you don't do this. It will not. It'll go the way it's going. Uh, so here's a, an interesting thing that came across. I told you guys, get involved, whether on the policy level to make policy, whether that policy ends up being law, so-called, that's the state level policy because you're all living in the corporation and sit to that, and that's not even a question, a joke. I don't know why people make so much more than a statement about it and move on to resolve this problem, uh, whether or not it's resol- it, it needs to be resolved. Who cares that it's a corporation? It's a fiction anyway, right, folks? So it, it's, it will be a fiction even when you fix it. And when you put it in a proper context, it's not such the enemy it's turned out to be. And when it became an enemy, we should have stopped it right there. We had the right to alter and abolish, and we didn't. Under international law, what does that mean? They're going to win. They're going to win until you throw them out. And there's ways to do it. And so this is what we talk about. Uh, I talk about it. I talk about it with my colleagues. We're taking the time it takes uh, in order to try to make things immediately better for us, but also go down the road because it wasn't done for decades, for generations. We're a, we're a duped people in the, in the country of the United States, if not everywhere, actually. The more I look around, we're pretty duped. But anyway, so here's a here's a thing you could do at the state level. A state's a set massive precedent passes law to effectively ban the NSA. Uh, yeah, okay, I thought that was pretty neat. Uh, so people are getting together. Uh, people in the legislatures are not happy. Maybe the the people in, uh, in Michigan are outspoken. I don't know what they didn't do about their water, but uh, here they'll do this, apparently. But Michigan has become the first state to ban the National Security Agency's intrusive data collection practices by passing a law that prohibits law enforcement and state agencies from turning over personal data to the federal government without due process. 
Now, my problem with this is when you look deep enough, you'd say it, it, it condition, always condition this stuff. It's not lawfully taken information. And if you make an application, that's a lawfully taken piece of information. So I don't even know what the process here. I think this may be just to coddle some, some so-called patriots' minds on how this works because the patriots don't write the laws. The attorneys do. Any rate, here, the point is that there's some law to try and limit the NSA. What I wanted to use it for is to show you the NSA, they say the word here, right here in this word called security. And then they add the, the additional word, like the death knell word, national security. National Security Agency is the NSA. Uh, now, they're supposed to be looking outward, not inward. That's a, another, another thing. Uh, but the war on terror gave them the license so-called to look inward. I'm saying this to expose to you all the things that go into uh, the 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 information that you use to analyze how you're going to get things accomplished. When, whether or not you can do anything will depend on whether or not the analysis that you do, the due diligence you put to the problem, will provide the information that give you an insight to be able to do that. And it may show you that maybe it's too big a piece to chew. You may have to start a little bit less, but this state wants to think that they can go against national security, NSA, data uh, data acquisition and all that. I, I see tons of problems, but I want to point out that this is a state trying to do something. It's state power and Tenth Amendment. It still works. They all say it works, and it does. I wouldn't be doing anything in the coordination if it didn't. So there's some things working, and that's part of the battlefield, too. But they, my thought on this, I looked at this, and they're talking about the Fourth Amendment Rights Protection Act. And it will go into effect next month after it passed the Mich- Michigan State Legislature with overwhelming support, uh, with only one no vote. So we get the, uh, you, you believe that these are working in your favor, and I, I would say that the way I've seen it work, the way I've seen the legislation run, the way I see who writes the legislation, unless you're not in on that and make sure that the legislative process doesn't destroy it, uh, this is going to be tailored uh, the way it needs to, be, to go to keep the status quo. Uh, that's why initiatives are a whole lot nicer to run. But uh, but any rate, uh, this, this goes in and they talk about the national security not getting data. Okay, but there's a caveat about lawful, only lawfully accepted data can be passed. So that's just your applications. Well, what's that to you then? That's telling you when you deal with the government and you deal in applications, that's one of the, your your Achilles heels. And I, and I suggest to you, I've been telling you this for, forever, uh, about this, this information that's out there, that you're, you're actually giving it to them. When you make these contracts or you make these applications, you're giving them all the legal necessity that they need to go after what they need to do on a legal side. I don't mean legal law. I mean just the fact that they can justify what they're doing. But the more, more, more important problem here, looking at the battlefield, and I've spoken to this in passing. I don't get too much into it because it really is irrelevant to most people. They don't really pay, pay attention to it. Uh, but we have a, we know the problem. We hear the problem. And that's sitting there to be a problem to be resolved. Uh, we hear about this national security. And I always told you, we always, we've we noticed that they use national security in order to circumvent the entirety of your Constitution. Now, that's not supposed to happen, but it has been. But I wanted to point out something, and this is part of the battlefield. This is part of what I tell you. You have to go after what the government's going to go do. It's not like they haven't done this before. I got a little another link to show you that uh, it's stated right into the condition. It happened back at the uh, so-called bankruptcy of the of the United States. They went to this early, early on. They did it in Lincoln's time. You have to put this in the equation and work out whether or not you can make a discussion that identifies whether or not this is an, ex- uh, an unlawful use of this. And this is what I've been telling you about how when I speak about this stuff, when we go up against the government and their assertion through their police powers, and the highest one is national security, you're going to have to be able to understand how to defeat that if you can. And once you find the evidence, possibly, that it can't be defeated, you just found the evidence that you can start telling people without an opinion that this country was was set up. It's a dupe. It's a big game, big, big, uh, plunderous uh, uh, organization. Big organi- organized crime syndicate, just like it says, it's stuck in commerce. That's just, they say it's legal. They give themselves license to do all this. So I'm not telling you what, I'm not saying how you're going to think about it or what you're going to do, but I'm saying if you don't come to this awareness and be able to put, prove your steps back, 
you really don't have a chance of understanding how you move this through. And and I understand. And there is a way to move it through in that, despite this condition, this overarching condition, and this so-called government necessity, which seems all-powerful, when we understand that it's there to be used, we know what we need to do to avoid it. And despite this overarching necessity, which can be used as a club to beat everything down, beat it all into submission, what we work on doesn't get beat into submission, notwithstanding it. And so I can tell you pretty certainly here, uh, that there are ways at this, notwithstanding the over, uh, the over oppressive uh, use of this necessity p- principle. Where did we hear about that? For those of you that do study, and it came up here this week. I just find how these things together come together. Now, when the United States defaulted, uh, the United States government defaulted. It was on Zero Hedge, a report coming from the Global Macro Monitor. I just want to go down. You can read through it. They have all this thing the guy writes about, all this stuff, all the history. You can read all about it. He talks about all these kinds of things. And he brings up this uh, book, uh, this uh, Learning the American of Forgotten Default, uh, the Project Syndicate website. But I want to go down to this one thing where he, he, he brings up just two statements uh, that I think are the key to this whole, one of the keys you have to keep in mind when you're moving this through. Uh, uh, and it's um, it's an absolute. And you see how quickly you, you can start organizing things up to understand that the government was set up to protect itself. It is that military consequence. Even if we didn't know about Lincoln, it functions to protect itself. And I don't mean that, see, every natural thing has to protect itself, but I'm saying they are using excuses to do it, not 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 actual uh, um, the, the twist of a phrase is how they use it, not an actual condition. Two of the statements made here. A key question then uh, re- regarding this discussion of the default of the United States in 1933 and what they did to the gold and the gold clause and the abolishment uh, of all future and past gold clauses and payment in gold. And they moved you on over into a non-gold supported uh, monetary system means they defaulted on a debt somewhere to somebody. I don't understand how that all happened since it was on the full faith and credit of the people. They certainly use that now to the trillions, don't they? They certainly use that now to create derivatives out of nothing. Uh, Actually, now they call it toxic debt to create financial wealth, financial wealth, which is all debt. They call it credit. A key question, then, is whether the government seeking to adjust contracts retroactively may once again invoke a legal argument of necessity. Understand there's a provision in the Constitution that says there's this thing about no ex post facto laws and the uh, impairment of obligations of contracts. Show you how unlawful the Supreme Court will rule based on something that's in international law. Outside of... uh, sitting within which the Constitution was born, and you have to understand this hierarchy as well, the United States Supreme Court agreed with necessity argument once before. It is not far-fetched to think that it may happen again. In fact, necessity was presented by the government as the reason why they went off a constitutional standard, and the Supreme Court, supposedly a constitutional body, this is before it got packed by Roosevelt in thirty-eight. I think this decision was made in 37. They agreed that necessity was an answer to trump the, uh, trump the Constitution. That sets an international law. Necessity. Necessity is a very interesting condition. Necessity is very difficult to overcome. So if you don't put that in your equations, I'm seeing together here, when you go back to that state law, NSA comes in and says, well, that's a necessity we need to know. We don't want to know any of the information that's not lawfully gathered. Besides, we don't need your stuff, right? Isn't this just superfluous? They've got access anyway. They don't need to go. They're not going to get anything from the state. The state is the federal. What do you think? Uh, commerce through the Constitution, the commerce was given over to Congress. What do you think your driving is but commerce? The state's just implementing a federal law, a federal authority. Does, does anybody see this? And so you, there's no argument here on this. There's no uh, thrashing about. You better get to the core of what's going on. Necessity is a very big deal. Necessity is, sits in international law. The Constitution was born in, the, in international law. 
And so it becomes a part of. Remember, I tell you, Kansas versus Colorado, 1907. They say the Supreme Court, right in there, states that the Supreme Court always takes cognizance of international law. Why do you think that is? It has to recognize all the prior engagements and all these servitudes that are sitting in Article Six of that Constitution. But necessity is this very important power that the government can invoke. I've been suggesting to you find all the ways you need to find the ways that that is is a pretext and not a fact. Uh, I, we've been able to do a bit of that, although we're still uh, well. That 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 machine may have got fired up here this week. Uh, we've been trying to do that with the fire uh, fire suppression policy of the United States of America, given uh, across the states in the Forest Service and the BLM. Uh, they use certain necessities. We've been able to show those necessities are pretexts. They don't stand. And so far now that we've been able to assert them in the minor parts that we've been able to do, again, getting people in seats of decision to actually start to fulfill what sits there for you and us. I say you, it's us. The U.S., us. Uh, it it de- destroys that ability for them to use necessity. Necessity is written in so many words in different ways. They don't even use the word. They use the context. And so you have to see all this stuff. I want to point this all this out for you. It's all to think about. It's all to uh, use. I use all this stuff it's just in my mind. I've read about the subject matters. It's all in my mind. I've seen how the how it's worked in the past. I know they have it as a weapon. I use it as I consider it a weapon against you. Mike, how do you how do you prevail against the 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 unstoppable weapon? It is really kind of an interesting puzzle. And we've been able to somewhat, well, at least in certain places, alter that. Can we attack the necessity of the national security? Uh, level of when they say they need it, probably not. But you know, we use national security in the mining uh, in the in the mining grants. You know, there's statutes you can go find that mining is a national security level interest. So I, I we move in and we claim national security protection, I- importance, impetus, intention, purpose of Congress, and we meet whatever they try to bring as an intention of national security counter to that. Now, that is an interesting way that we've been able to stalemate the problem. Because we understand as well, and I think they do too, you don't keep your mineral industries going. In your nation, you're going to die. You die as a nation. All that military hardware they use to go pound and kill on people, it goes away. You have to, you have to put everybody into a slave labor camp in order to get the metal materials, and they found out that doesn't work already. They know that. So it's always easier to get the slave to be who they are. So to, the the bar was raised in America. They decided that they were going to have to give the land to the slave to make the minerals. Guess what? When you do that, the slave's now isolated and outside of your control. But that was the incentive in order to do what? Do the national security interest of creating minerals for your society. That was the trade-off. And so. Looking at it this way, we've been able to set up national security in, uh, causes against a, a national security uh, excuse. And I ask you to do that wherever you, you look. You don't necessarily speak to it direct. You don't say national security. You put the condition out that meets that definition. And I bring this stuff up because this is what goes on in how we address the the, the uh, unstoppable weapon. It is stoppable. You just have to start think, step back and start un- deprogram yourself and reconsider what's going on. Uh, you're having to do this because you're looking at an enemy. And they is us. The U.S. It's those in government. I don't worry about the government. Those in government are the ones that are pulling the switch, writing the papers and pulling the triggers and all this other stuff. It's people, men and women, take on the co- the costume of authority. I've identified as well. How do you stop that? Well, you identify it as the felony when it comes after things and interferes with things that they're not supposed to touch. I've had to explain all this in prior broad- broadcasts. It's uh, not something I just talked to you about. It's something I use. It's something that we do. And it comes in the most subtle ways. We don't we don't uh, beat on our chest and proclaim it. We just go in and expose the provision 
how it comes contrary to the the provision it can't come contrary to. We I, I tie that over to uh, uh, an imperative, a national imperative, and then we go find the statute that says it's that's a national security issue. You can't do that. And if you try to, you're going to have to have a really high level reason. But it's not going to be on your say. That has to go before the judiciary. We're not talking about now the constitutionality of the act that they're meeting. We're talking about the necessity that they can't disregard. I'm starting to believe I'm talking too fast here for a lot of you, but seriously, not as an insult. It's just the level of thought that we have been uh, inculcated away from is the problem that we have right now. You start talking like uh, what sounds to be this unintelligible level, and that is the chasm that they've created in our mentality to keep us from being able to stop them. And you have to overcome that obstacle as well. That's another, I call it the chasm. It's not a wall. You have to jump that chasm. You, you, have, to fi- you have to fix that. And as I say, to best fix that, you focus on something to go do. Start exercising your muscles, uh, that muscle. But maybe you don't want to do a whole body um, tone. Maybe you just want to start getting your, uh, you know, getting your balance. That's a good one. Just do things that keep your balance. Maybe we'll throw a, a two-pound weight in one arm and a two-pound weight in the other to keep balance there. And maybe we'll lift those for a little while. A small weight, a small burden, a small responsibility I take on in order to start flexing my muscles, in order to strengthen them for a bigger a bigger lift. And so, uh, <clears throat> anyway, uh, necessity is going to be a big deal. I don't know how the state law gets uh, reflects that. I got so many questions about all these things. I don't have the time really to go through it. We could talk all day on laughing about how what a joke all this really is. But this is serious stuff. People were stolen back in the '33. Uh, what twenty percent of your, forty percent of your wealth was stolen by this act, and the Supreme Court allowing two violations of the Constitution due to a due to this thing called necessity. And uh, I've told you before, if you can find your necessity. You're going to stand a whole lot better than if you don't have it. And that comes in a lot of different ways, which I I really can't even touch here. It all depends on what you choose to go do. So another necessity that we have with the NSA peering in and all these other things and all this almost impossible impossibility about how we're going to keep ourselves in communication lines that are not uh, susceptible to incursion, which are going to be looked at by artificial intelligence in real time, uh, which are going to eventually be uh, things that you, it's like you know, what we hear about uh, the Chinese government finding out about people's discussion and then you're dead uh, or putting in prison. That, that's how it's going to, it's happening in real time now. Uh, they're going to, they're going to apply this technology to all this. And I keep telling you, I, I dropped Skype a long time ago. Uh, I, I refuse to go there only because it looks like the better way to go is to at least try to encrypt yourself. I know two reasons why I want to do that. One is I can prove I intended it to be private and I can impose another burden on, on the criminal. And if they don't, then I got, you know, at least I got a word in my mouth about their criminality, which is very important because they don't like to expose that that's the embarrassment point. Uh, then, uh, so I show that I don't want it by not getting on Skype. And I have a likelihood until they, they can break those codes or get into my system in order to that's not matter, I have a li- higher likelihood that I can do some surprise information with people that uh, may not be found out. Maybe we're a little premature on the level of it, but it's going to be something that everyone's going to have to pay attention to. This is real-time problems as we start to find out uh, that the past can be opened up to uh, from us uh, in what we thought was a, a, a security feature. Again, another fact of the battlefield. And so you have to, again, self-censor becomes uh, important, notwithstanding what you think is private. But critical flaws, these are all informa- some of this information is now backed up so far, but I figured I needed to tell you about this. Uh, that we're going to see lots of, we're seeing lots of flaws and lots of, inter- uh, uh, lots of problems with our technology that they've handed us to do this with. But you need to know about critical flaws in PGP and SM, uh, SMM MIME tools can reveal encrypted emails in plain text. And uh, these uh, it will be a link. Uh, this is a um, regarding the end-to-end encryption for these things. 
uh, that use uh, uh, emails and browsers that use this technology. Uh, Electronic Fo- uh, Frontier Foundation uh, has come uh, uh, to expose undisclosed vulnerabilities and recommend that uh, people and users uninstall PGP and S MIME applications until the flaws are patched. You can get a link to this. I think it has to do with the um, Enigma plugin on Thunderbird which would be huge, uh, especially with Linux. And uh, Apple is a, a GPG tools, for those of you with, uh, with Apple Mail. And with Outlook, it's a GPG for Win. Uh, these are, I think, plugins uh, that attach onto another application that have a flaw. The problem with this one also is they can undo the prior uh, text of the of the. Uh, previous uh, way in your history so anyway no one waste too much time those of you that are interested will go get this link or go check it out uh, we have to be cognizant of our vulnerabilities uh, even within the context of being uh, encrypted i will be somewhat guarded as well uh, so it's just the it's just the nature of what's going on. a lot of people say oh, to hell with it I, I guess that's an attitude but i also know that i'm doing some very serious work with people that i really would rather be protected at least in my intention to protect than to just hand it all out there so um not an expert on the on the on the protection uh, um, but uh, we like i said i got off i got off skype a long time ago people are fine i found out about that i'm still surprised people even use it i was just fine working out with uh, somebody i found out that skype's been reduced in its capacity it's only a tool for surveillance that's all it is now um, and, and to remind you, also, I didn't realize this, but apparently uh, Tox, T-O-X, the program T-O-X, they had a little bit of a shakeup a few years ago. Looks like that shakeup might be cleared, and it looks like their new program, Tox program, still continues to work. I've been using it for many, many, many years. Uh, you, you might consider an end-to-end encryption Tox program. I think, it's, I think it's an open source community as well. Uh, that seems to work really well. I use it for file transfers also. It works pretty fast, actually. And uh, it's supposed to be end to end. It looks like it is. It's so uh, people can do it. Uh, there was a question on uh, on something about the financing of the of the uh, organization, but that was a couple years ago. And it looks like their download works really really well to set up an account. So T O X, and I think Talks Chat is where you're going to get it, or it's on GitHub. I don't know. I want to remind y'all uh, that's another alternative, and it works pretty. It seems to work pretty well. Uh, but uh, that's up to you to find uh, as well. And we all have to. I've been asking that we all find at least one or two quality. Uh, systems that we can continue continue to communicate because I, I think it's going to become more and more important as we start finding these uh, these kind of flaws. Otherwise, so we have to work out uh, proven and trusted systems uh, that uh, as other things are taken taken away. And as I say that, uh, and I'm not sure. I, I heard on Friday's uh, uh, balls to the wall with Grimner that uh, um, you see why uh, it may be going through some adjustments. And I need to tell you that I should have said this earlier in the broadcast. Uh, be uh, be ready that that we uh, that you may have to go to RLM reallibertymedia.com in order to get this broadcast. Uh, it, I think he was saying that Jules Health is is not very well, or at least not enough to continue the demands of a network. Um, so I'm not sure what's all happening, but uh, wish uh, Jules all the, all the health she can maintain. That's not a cool thing at all. You need your health. And uh, w- and again, uh, these play our 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 forums uh, are are going to be it takes a lot of work, and it, it takes a, an investment, uh, and that need to be covered. And pretty soon, we're going to be down to not much of anything. So those of you that are listening on UCY, I'm not sure if it's for sure or what. I don't know any. I haven't talked to anybody about it, uh, but that was the word out that, that Jules is having um, uh, some thoughts about. Um, not having enough, not being able to continue, and that'll be a great loss to the to our our effort. Certainly, the broadcast gets re re um, syndicated. There, we'll do it on Thursday uh, on the file, and we're doing it today live. And you know, so I thank you, thank Jules, you for all your what you've done. I hope hope we hope that all works out for you on on the health end. But folks, um, this takes a lot of effort, and uh, I guess this is our problem. We're going to be divided down. And if we don't start to find alternatives uh, and work on that, maybe that's your strength. You can you can stay ahead of the game for most of us that don't have the time. There, th- this is a, a real a real problem. We got v- real vulnerabilities in a in a real global. Uh, what 1984 wasn't supposed to be a plan. 
but but here we we see it uh, ro- rolling out. Not that I get it. I have never even read the. I don't think I've ever read 1984. I may have seen some movie about it or something or some part of it. Uh, but it, it it's all in the. Ro- it's all the stuff I hear people talk about is in the law. It's already there. People talking about, oh, Agenda 21 just started coming down in the last 10 years. No, it's been imposed on us way back and started rolling out. It started started getting it out in the 60, late 60s. It started to make local law, folks. Your local counties accepted the, the foundation of it in the 80s, early 80s. This has been around, around us. We didn't need, I said we're infiltrated and surrounded. We've been, we've been wallowing in a darn swamp for, for decades. Decades and decades. It's just y'all that came on late in the last 10, 15 years that uh, think you're woke. And you ain't even seen it yet. And I, I want you to see it because we, we need, we need to help ourselves. Uh, anyway, so getting back, uh, be careful on your, uh, on your encryption has been found to be weak, uh, vulnerable. And undisclosed, and this is the kind of things we have to we have to concern ourselves with. I want you to be aware of it. There's so a couple of quite a few other warnings that have come out this last few weeks. Uh, just keep track. You need to keep track of it, folks. Uh, I don't know what more to more to say. Um, there was another article moving on. We get uh, a lot of information coming down and coming through, and uh, the critical flaws and insights and things that go on, and uh, how you keep abreast of all this information. And, uh, you know what you how we understand how we uh, are presented information for us and our consumption as consumers and I keep saying and I'm not the only one you have to engage this you have to critical thinking that's just a that's a throwaway term anymore but uh, because it's not the the kind of critical thinking I I think about is not the one I hear people talking about throwing some formulation out there and says oh this is how you have to do it that's another psyop folks but uh, at any rate uh, uh, you will come to your your mind will be opened as you move more in the truth and it'll be developed for you as you do it you'll be blind and you won't see as long as you don't you know, as long as you're arguing with me you're a, you're blind and you can't see i just tell you that you don't have to see what i see but i can but i know when you're attacking the things i know that we're doing that are successful you can't possibly know what you're talking about uh, you can't possibly be a, 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 um, engaging in a way that's helpful I want people to be helpful. I want to themselves, if nothing else. But here, another information here on, on pork, uh, the meat, uh, not uh, not goodies in the farm bill. One of the industry newsletters I read regularly in globalmeatnews.com uh, is an article, which occasionally collects articles on specific uh, topics and special editions. This one is about pork, and they go through and they list all of these articles about pork and, and all these findings and studies in uh, things um, that are good for you and all these things. Well, then you find well, anyway. So then the uh, 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 a st- it, one of the studies was that feeding I think uh, infants uh, pork ground pork increased their uh, statistically increased their growth, made them more gri- more um, more healthy and gr- and bigger uh, their body. So. To the point, I don't really want to get into all that. My point was, really was this was this note that was thrown in that I looked at this and I said, well, this is exactly the problem of this method called consensus science. It's the method of the problem of what people take information in and try to put more on, more importance on certain things than they ought to. That uh, certain actions may not be causations these kinds of information these kinds of things you need to look at the no, one of the notes on the pork study regarding the growth rates uh, it elicited a tirade in the new food economy a, a new food economy was a publication about how so much of nutrition research is correlational and says little about about causation now, I'm going to interject here. I want to go back to try to read this all at one piece. But I want, you, you need, this is how you start analyzing these things. This is how I analyze this. When I say fact, apply the facts to something, and we'll work from the facts. I don't need the opinions first. Let me see the facts first. Then we'll go apply the law. I'm, I'm, we're going to the, we're not talking correlation. We're talking about existence and realities of impact relative to the, the, uh, uh, an outcome and what might be the causative factor for it. And so we go on and, there was a tirade made about the fact that the nutritional research is 
is correlational but not causational. The writer singles out the pork study as one of three examples of possible misuse of statistics. Misuse of statistics. Feeding infants pureed pork and increased body length? Trick question. P equals 0.001. So something really seems to be happening. But does greater body lengths in infants actually matter? We'll let the scientists pursue this on their own until they come up with something that's not just statistically significant, but meaningful. Not just statistically significant, but meaningful. The point isn't to prevent you from snacking on prunes and chocolate while you shovel pureed pork in the baby, into the baby. Do it if you want to, and given the marvelous powers of the placebo effect, you'll probably be happy you did. But stop treating studies like these as if they contain the truth. So let me go back. Statistically significant, but not meaningful. And what have I told you also on the administrative side? When you do a policy challenge or a rule challenge and you go to make a comment, or you, the, the, the process has to be meaningful. The, the, the inter interpretation of the input was, has to be meaningful. It's not just a correlation of activity. It has to be meaningful. And this tirade points out the point of what I've been telling you all the time on how you get into these things that are done against you because they are work on statistical relationships for the most part. I can't remember. It does all these phrases and sayings and jokes. Don't come to my mind so easy. It's something about the liars, the figure and figures lie or something. That kind of thing's going on here. They tell you that, and we went through an analysis about this uh, correlation, the possibility of something happened, the high, high significance of it, but that doesn't mean causation. Now, what I want to point out here is this is exactly what I've been trying to tell people. I have been saying. I've not been trying to say. I've been telling you. It's what scientists will say when they're actually being honest. But it's but this is study of a study of a study. How many times have we done this on Behind the Woodshed? And the statistical relationship is what consensus policy is based on. It's this method of destruction. It's the way they make policy. It's what they call best science. It's not science at all. It's a statistical re relational condition that may or may not be causative. It certainly isn't meaningful. Now, what am I keep saying here about this statistically significant problem? It isn't climate change. Essentially, and I couldn't, I've been looking, I can't even find it, I posted it on my blogcaster, I can't find the link anymore. It, 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 it paraphrased, the IPCC says it's a statistical relationship to, relationship to an unproven hypothesis. Michael Mann made global warming. Mann made global warming. It's a, it's a statistical relationship to an unproven hypothesis is what this guy here that does a tyroid against a pork, uh, pork study is saying, that the statistical relevance is irrelevant to meaning. And yet a whole concept of, of, of fraud is based on this statistical relationship to an unproven hypothesis. And governments are running on it to destroy your life is part of the agenda, is part of what I part of the work I do to stop it, is what we sued in 2013 to enjoin, all this nonsense that we go through, that uh, can tell you, the nonsense that you won't listen to, that I can tell you about, uh, that the governments won't listen to until the mass of you step up and say, hey, you, know, you guys failed to answer this, uh, which means that, and we can see it, that the st statistic isn't meaningful. Uh, you need to enjoin your activity from the felony you're committing, the treason you're committing against the people. But the National Park Service is com complaining now, and all this idea of statistical relationships not being meaningful. 
they're, they're complaining now that they were the Trump administration, uh, the new rules, don't allow them to mention uh, anthropomorphic effects as a cause. And they're complaining about that. While they're stating that there's science, there's science here that they're, they're promoting. The National Park Service quietly released a long-delayed report that mentions humanity's role in climate change, which officials had removed in earlier drafts. The report published Friday without a press release or a social media activity from the Parks Department of, or Interior Secretary Ryan Zinke shows estimates of sea level change of 118 coastal national park sites and estimates of storm damage for 79 of the sites. Re, uh, the 87-page uh, report reveals and obtained uh, analyzed 18 versions, 18 versions of a scientific report and found that on February 6th, a Park Service official removed the word anthropogenic and mankind's influence on nature in five places. Three references to human activities, human activities causing climate change, were also scrubbed. Caffrey told Reveal that the North National Park Service officials pressured her to accept the changes or the report might be released in an edited form without her name on it. However, the following reveals reporting in the call from the Democrats for an investigation on the attempts to at censorship, Park Service official agreed to reinsert the terms. Quote, the fight probably destroyed my career in the National Park, in the National Park Service, but it was well, well, will be worth it if we can uphold the truth and ensure, ensure that scientific integrity of other scientists won't be challenged so easily in the future. I'm going to stop there. Let me go back to this other guy's critique. The statistical significance is not meaningful. It's not scientific. And the Democrats forced this wordage back in. And then I want to go to the next thing. The origination of the statement of this event was reported. In the sea level rise and storm surge projections for the National Park Service, uh, re report authors analyzed and downscaled data sets for the NOAA and the IPCC relative to National Park units. Remember, those were 12 made-up scenarios on top of the statistical invalidity and infirmities. Uh, the results illustrate the potential for permanent coastal inundation and flooding. Do the results illustrate the potential for permanent coastal inundation and flooding due to sea level rise and storm surge under varying greenhouse gas emissions scenarios. How about reality, folks? How about it? Did they check reality? No, they use their studies and their models, right? They use their statistics, which the other guy was saying is not meaningful. And I'm telling you, you bring this up in a report or you, as an objection, you say, but their statistics are not meaningful. And, and the law requires a meaningful interpretation. And you can destroy these systems' arguments. They have none. Results of the analysis were, were used to create a suite of storm surge maps. Or just animate, just create the cartoons, folks. Just draw this stuff up. Uh, for each site included in the study. It is important to note that coastal areas will experience sea level change differently. Owing to the variable nature of ocean currents, top topography of the coast, and the influence of localized cha changes in land elevation, the coastline near Jean Lafitte National Historical Park and Reserve, for example, is likely to experience faster rates of relative sea level rise due to high rates of subsidence. Conversely, most Alaskan parks are expected to see continued falling of relative sea level as the post-glacial landmass rebounds for the loss of heavy to land-based ice. I'm going to stop there. They say that is a theory as well, that it would rebound to such an event that would go up. Even if that's the so, even if it's the case in Lafitte, what was the list of things they told you are going to affect these levels? Was ocean currents? 
topography of the coast, and changes in land elevation. Did you see in there climate change? No. So in the report about this, climate change is not a changer of the of the uh, water level. It's actually the physicality of the land, the dynamics of the land itself. And that's all they could say about this, even though they're claiming what they're saying in the report, that statistics are science. So you take these two reports, the truth is that statistics are not causative. And that guy on the other report said it exactly. And yet in the same week we get, uh, we we have this, this re- review where they're trying to put uh, anthropomorphize weather. Tom didn't talk about the sun e- doing anything either here. Didn't talk about all the other dynamics. Uh, may, uh, talk about made up models that no one's perfected to 100% accuracy, have they? Do you know of any one of those that's been perfected to 100% accuracy? No, that's why they have 12. The apostles, I suppose, for their green religion. But I wanted to point out here the, the interesting information you can get that real quickly you can destroy if you have a mind to do so. And you show up this cult, this authorita, this color of authority underneath the concept of best of something as a fraud. And what you're showing, we start to work this through, you start to see those that would claim necessity are using it as a pretext. That's a fraud. And if they do it to take away people's rights, that's a felony in an official capacity. And if you do it contrary to the laws and make war on the laws of at least the United States, that's treason. That's what we delineated in 2013. So it, it all it's not, you don't even attack this, uh, I'm not even having to be the brainiac about how to figure this out. I just take other people's statements and I can tie it together in a scenario that, that in fact is the fact. It's the reality. Statistics are not meaningful. That's all I need to do. That's all the standard is in the, in the administrative, uh, in the NEPA. What's the meaningful process in your dis- dispute resolution? What was a meaningful process? When you have a what they claim is a meaningful pro- process that comes out to a meaningless outcome, which is they're trying to push, you caught them. And all you have to do is have your letter on that in that committee on that uh, comment period uh, in order to have standing in order to stop it. As an alternative to other things that you might consider doing, we can do this. It's not that hard. And that little example I've just pointed out is how you can address just gobs of things. Gobs is a professional word, too. Gobs. Gobs of things. I get paid the big bucks to say that. So, what, to me, it, it's not... We, we can hear the crying and complaining. And to me, it, where I may have had ideas on what we have to do before... To me, it's really, no, we just have to have people doing things. And typically, if you do something in something that inspires you on your own, or something within a, an, in, an inspiration of yours, you're going to be flying. You'll be a lot faster going through what you're going to do. It doesn't become the treasury that it, it, it is because we're dealing in a war. All wars are, are no, not good. I mean, I don't care what you, what you call them. I don't care what you think. Well, unless you're a psychopath, I guess, and you're not in it. But these 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 things, statistics are meaningless, and they and they run our lives anymore. They're not causative. And and this is the main thing that the usurpers of our way of life have used in order to usurp our way of life. It's really not that difficult to see. They make up a bunch of stuff. They run science without any actual knowledge in a field, actually. Like my main problem with I talk about this uh, genetic modification. Wonderful idea. Wonderful things that you talk about when you get into that, what's possible there. It's in a, it's in a field of study that I was brought up in through, hybridization of plants to make them better, but not as a, as a genetic DNA transformation, more of how do you, you know, n- nor- normal pollination hybridization. My grandfather used to do it. I grew up with him doing it. He used to design all kinds of food. Squash with its special type of characteristics. So every uh, 
every chef or anybody, any, any housewife or anybody who cooked food would love this squash. Great taste, texture, color, marketability as far as what it looks like, lasting in the refrigerator. He used to go through and, and produce food this way. All kinds of different vegetables. I was there helping him pollinate flowers when I was little. So there's a way to do that. It takes a lot of time, a lot of energy. So GMO, uh, making uh, modifications to the genes, boy, that sure could accelerate things. But they have a problem. My main problem is, what about when you invade the cell? It responds with defenses that are no good down the road. Unintended consequences, if you will. We'll get into all of it. There's no current uh, scientist that will talk to me about that. None. They'll talk about how they want to communicate, but they fabricate a condition that's not what I want to know about, and then they jump on you for not be, not being on the bandwagon. They don't understand at some level they're brainwashed, and they've been brainwashed by the same academia we sued that said that they're brainwashing people into taking on these new agendas, and then they get upset that you told them that they're brainwashed, and they don't know it. And they use this myopic view of how the world is going to be great. I was told it the same way, living better living through chemistry. They were preparing us for this complete destruction. But the, we, we ought to have understood the baselines of how, how plants and cells work before we started, call it, if we want to call it science. Uh, that I guess I didn't have to worry too much if I'm pollinating flowers. The, the plant does what it's going to do. I'm not invading the plant. I'm just doing a very specialized, I'm a very specialized bee. And nature takes its course after that, and you get what you get. And you select what you select, and you hope it holds, and you hope it holds over, over generations. But that's not the way that GMO works. And, and so we don't, then we find the problem of the unintended consequences. It's been my main focus on, on any of this. Let's start there first for me. And then we run across these little indicators in all of this stuff that's being allowed about GMOs and all the scientists that will say that they're perfectly harmless. And let's just look at what we've done here. Oh, we've put some kind of a, a, a enhancement on it, but don't look at the rest of the potential things. Oh, and there's no science against their the, against them. When you know now they're statistical and meaningless, but notwithstanding that, that's the best science is, see? Uh, but here we have a little story, very interesting to me, how this rolls out. Development and characterization of the first DSRNA-resistant insect population from western corn rootworm, Diabrotica virgifera, vir, virgifera lacante. Wow, pretty interesting statement. The use of DSRNA to control insect pests via RNA interference, RNAi pathway, is being explored by researchers globally. However, with every new class of insect control compounds, the evolution of insect resistance needs to be considered, and understanding resistance mechanisms is essentially essential in designing durable technologies and effective resistance management strategies. To gain insight into in insect resistance to DSRNA, a field screen with subsequent laboratory selection was used to establish a population of DVSNF7 DSRNA resistant western corn rootworm, Diabrotica virgifera virgifera, a major maize insect pest. WCR resistant to ingested DVSNF7 and DSRNA had impaired luminal uptake and resistance was not DVSNF7, DSRNA specific as indicated by cross resistance to all other DSRNAs tested. No resistance to the Bacillus thuringiensis uh, CRY3BB1 protein was observed. DVSNF7 DSRNA resistance was inherited recessively located on a single locus and autosomal. Together, these findings will provide insights for DSRNA deployment for insect pest control. I'll stop reading. They admit it's important to double to check on these conditions, didn't they? What did they say in the title? They've been making all these compounds and these chemicals. And what they say in the title? The development and characteristics 
characterization, the development and characterization of the first DSRNA resect, res, resistant insect population. This is the first one now, and they've got a whole world of chemistry and GMO going on. Is the problem. They didn't start here uh, and use this as the understanding of what happens in the mutational or un unintended consequences end of this technology. And when they did so, they did so uh, relative to statistical probabilities, not reality, not something meaningful. Uh, I'm trying to convey something here about how we have to, again, this kind of touches on our opinions and all this. We have to get out of that. That's the divisive part of this. Oh, you're going to be divisive. You start talking in this stuff, but you're going to be divisive against those that are mind-controlled by academia that push them in this direction by the system. Remember, the university system was sitting in the background, aiding and abetting those that we sued in 2013. University system was academia. Those professors are teaching these scientists. These scientists don't even understand what they're being told at some level about how they're instructed to look past all these things that a normal scientist would never have allowed. This report actually has, I think, been done and written by Monsatin, Bon Satan's uh, scientist, I think. This is kind of a, well, we need to be looking at this stuff. If you look, they're really soft on some of the words as well. The point was they've never developed until now this, this, this condition to investigate the impact. Never. They didn't even know it wasn't, it's not even part of the equation. And this is just one little example I try to bring to you. That you, as you're doing your studies, that's what you're, you're looking for these omissions that ought to be in an actual reality of science, an actual reality of knowledge, an actual reality of applied knowledge. In fact, I remember something just flashed in my mind a long time ago. Uh, this book we had to get for college, it was uh, Applied Technology. More than just the thought of the technology, no, it's it's a, it's applying it and looking in the analysis of how it's going to what how it affects society, good, bad, or indifferent. It's not just the technology; it's the application. Always, what is its force and effect in the world? Not by statistics, not by studying it from afar or behind a book. No, from its application, its actual working. So here's another example for you, uh, given that you want it, uh, to how uh, I believe in small part. There's more to talk about on these things, but. This shows you that you can interfere with someone's certain statistical assertion that everything's safe by showing, well, wait a minute, you didn't even have a control. You've never seen this before, this little report. Did you apply even this? And they're saying that this is the beginning of how you do that. I've read that, I think, two weeks ago, another report just like this. They're just now figuring out what reality is. A lot of this is just invented stuff it, for an outcome. And it's for an outcome that we find, I tell you, it's the bottom line. It's one of the major things. It's a commerce state. It's a commerce world. How can we overdo other people by commerce power? And if we can't get them to do, be subservient commerce power, then we'll go militarily and beat them into submission. And, and history shows certain peoples, certain nations are... We're, we're real good at that for a while, and then they went away. Right now, the United States is real good at it, and I suspect they're going to go away. And, and we are the people that, that it's going to go away on unless we step up and bring some reality back uh, to what's going on. And that is a so broad, broad specter. My, my mind just went, I don't even know what to talk about on all that. That's so beyond me, uh, but it's out there. It can be approached, and all these different avenues are reflective of this condition. But things are made up. We talk about these novel viruses. We talk about these GMO. We talk about now we see statistically they say they're safe. We know they're not. No one wants to speak to it. Why? Because none of you, none of you out there will step up in the proper way and you'll present this failure, this fraud. No, you'd rather argue with me that oh, there's only nothing you can do or it's not going to work or it didn't work for me or whatever. You know, you're going to do the dapple, no dapple thing. You're not going to take the mechanisms already in place. See, what people don't understand is dis dispute resolution is mediation. It's arbitration. It's not law. It's what you can get people to agree to. That's what's proving policy today. 
So I get, I get my mind just triggered over. People would say, well, we don't need a legal system. We could just arbitration. Well, that's the legal system. I mean, this is what, get back to the like I said, getting back to mining d- districts. I, my, boy, my mind just went crazy here. But I mean, off to the big, di- big. We we'll get back here quick. Mining districts, they they had their own court systems. It was the miners themselves. That was the jury. Every every organization, every every jurisdiction, I should say, is an organ organization. It's an organ has organs. It has to function in order to do things. It, it's surrogates for ourselves. So. Juries had we had dead trials. That, that was an arbitration of sorts. But anyway, more formally, it's a it's a jury of your peers. But consensus now, without all the poli- without all the foundation, is statistical. Can you get more people to have consensus and agree with what is the outcome presented to them? While well, you fended off and insulted every attack uh, to show that it was a fraud, is your consensus process? is how your life is being destroyed is this condition that keeps going on that allows uh, like the who not the rock group not the owl but the who world health organization to broker for big pharma on a global level on these novel things that i told you the pig fly flu they said it was novel i told you patent law says that's patented and what have we found out all this stuff that comes out there have been working on it's all patented it's all patentable stuff it's all novel it's all in commerce it's all going to be protected by the government. Who would do that? Who would make a novel virus uh, that's going to be protected in commerce by the government unless it's a tool or a weapon against you? This is pretty clear. I don't have to get so deep in a lot of this stuff. I've been telling you this stuff all, all along. Well, we had a newer one that came on. And now we have the proof to the financial connection. Even if on the surface it looks pretty pretty self-evident that there would be a need. But it's tied to another fraud. And so this is how we go through this. Novel, GMO, who knows what they're doing. You remember last week we talked about they were looking for the anomaly. They found this by accident. It was an anomaly that they ended up using. Totally off the chart, totally not even in their models. But they were observant to notice a thing that they needed that was an unintended consequence. They're using the unintended consequences now in order to move things forward. Well, I don't think this is, this next thing is not so unintended. I haven't talked about it for a, a couple months. I don't like talking about these over and over again. It's just a, a broken record. But this new piece of information uh, well, pretty well dictates to us what, what's going on on the world stage about what's going on in the financial sector relative to all these people that would tell you that they're looking out for your health security. A uh, Congo Ebola outbreak may be an el- eligible event for pandemic cat bond and swaps. The worsening outbreak, it didn't go away, folks. They had it, bur- they had it beat down, and now they let it come back. And they, they, let it, they had it come back after they decided they were going to do the experiment with a vaccine. A worsening outbreak of the Ebola virus in the, in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Remember, that was going to be the United States of America, uh, of Africa, before the United States and the U.N. went and destroyed that republic. Remember that. This is what happens to you. Uh, Ebola virus in the Democratic Republic of Congo. This is the Agenda 21 being worked on you. Debt, health, austerity, servitude, control. This is it. Uh, Democratic Republic of Congo may be considered an eligible event under the terms of the Class B pandemic swaps and pandemic catastrophe bonds that were issued by the World Bank to support the financing the Pandemic Emergency Financing Facility. The outbreak first came to light just over a week ago when the World Health Organization, the reporting source for the PEF capital markets transaction, said that it was uh, had confirmed two cases out of a total of 32 Ebola virus uh, disease cases. Confirmed two out of 32. And they're already moving to a report that triggers something that if you, hadn't, if you didn't know where to look, you'd have never known this was going on. A bond, a monetary, a fiscal bond on an outbreak. This is now tying right to the World Bank. Remember, the World Bank has toolkits. And this is how the toolkit will explain to you how you destroy an aspect of every society. And they've got a toolkit for about every aspect of life. If you just go and go look, it's there. 
and they'll give you how to do it. They'll tell you how to go and influence your local local government, why you have to go local, uh, and, and counter these toolkits. These people are very, very intelligent. They have the plan, and their plan, plan is our problem. But we don't have a plan, and we argue amongst ourselves. It's not looking good, but... Congo Ebola outbreak is now eligible event under pandemic cat bonds. Very interesting. Wow, World Bank. Bottom line here, folks. Catastrophe bonds, like CAT. What is a catastrophe bond? Now, this gets the, uh, it explains, this link will explain it. I'll read a little bit here. You really got to get your your uh, your head on correctly when you read this stuff. It ends up being uh, risk management bonds of mutual insurance for certain parties, typically insurance and governments. Uh, but they are for the catastrophes that happen that these these insurers may not be able to meet. Because I've wondered when they were talking of these hurricanes were going on, and they, we got a couple right in a row that one year. How do these insurance companies actually survive? Well, they almost didn't. This was the answer to this. This is how they, they do it. But the, the problem ends up being later on, and I don't know if I'm going to read part of it, it ends up being tied to the derivative market, which is the fantasy world. Uh, so the, they got deep pockets now. As I told you, when they finally threw on the world that derivatives were something that they could actually make make money from or make currency movement through, uh, we were done as a people uh, as far as controlling that fiat system. We have to now prior, privatize our, our, our actions. But a catastrophe bond, a CAT, is a high-yield debt instrument that is usually insurance-linked and meant to raise money in a case of a catastrophe such as a hurricane or earthquake. It has a special condition that states if the insurer, such as the insurance or reinsurance company, suffers a loss from a particular predefined catastrophe, then its obligation to pay interest or and or repay the principal is either deferred or completely forgiven. Breaking down catastrophe bond cat. The cat- catastrophe bonds are used by property casualty insurers and reinsurers to transfer risk investors, to transfer risk investors, This lowers their reinsurance costs and frees up money from the company to invest, including potentially underwriting more insurance. The structure of the cap bond provides for a payout to the insurance company if a defined event occurs, such as a certain magnitude earthquake or a total insurance loss greater than a particular amount. If you want to know about a risk management and insurance, go to these people. These people know how to do their statistics. It's not meaningful, but it's what they run the whole system on because they just get people to agree on this. I don't people. These are industry. Agree on this, and then they start making contracts amongst each other. This is all for mutual, uh, mutual insurance. This is now particularly in admiralty. It's all international. It's all a natural to that. And so if you if you missing how to study this and haven't read anything about international law relative to insurance and all this, which includes your commerce in the States for your cars and your houses and all this other stuff, you're missing a big old part of this. But now we have the proof that the uh, Congo Ebola was on the list uh, for an investment strategy uh, relative to its imposition on uh, the Congo by the, the hoop. Remember, this is a closed house. Uh, the, uh, here's a, an evident, uh, referencing one of these bonds, the IBRD CAR 111-1122. Uh, the Artemis Catastrophe Bond Insurance Link Securities Deal Directory aims to provide a one-stop resource for information on every CAT bond and ILS transaction we hold information on. The content of this deal directory is provided as is, and there will be no some omissions. Help us to keep the bonds current. So you go through and you see the details of this 111.12, and they're all part of this World Bank, uh, International Bank of Reconstruction and Development Global Debt Facility. They tell you all about this. This is a, a, 20, a 2030. It's already in play. It's all been in play. A twenty thirty was just the just the goal for this uh, time period till twenty thirty. But the money in the world works from these bond these monetizations these these uh, swap 
uh, agreements, the collateralized conditions, these are derivatives. It's outside of anything you thought was constitutional. It's in, it's in admiralty. It, it sits offshore, even though the Constitution says uh, the Article Three courts have cognizance of them. Remember, they're a pandemic. I said pandemic was a made-up term. This entire thing is a made-up thing. They take a real thing and then they blow it up into this. Uh, the, the Ebola was almost salvaged, and then they had the Ebola vaccine campaign that they said was to begin. The, the, they say now that they're going to put in after. Remember, there was those tests. Those tests gave people the Ebola. All of a sudden, everything went quiet, and now it flares back up again. Now the reports come out that there's actually a whole funding system, leveraged funding, folks, behind how this works and bringing a disease, a novel disease, to you. Remember, the pandemic is only a DNA uh, vector uh, goes to two different regions of the WHO world and infects those two regions. That's a pandemic. That's it. I told you the doctor giving you the vaccine injection is the is the DNA vector for the sec- for the vector in the injection. I told you that back in what 2009. That's a pandemic. This is a setup. And so, we again, we see the proof now. It's monetized. And then we hear this. We're going to go ahead and blow this thing up so that there's going to be some mo- movement of the derivative collateralization information. I don't fully understand it. I understood enough enough of it to know, uh, in one regard, this truly is a, an interesting tool of protection. But when you're making high-risk, high-investment returns, uh, uh, you know, the cats will play. Uh, escape Ebola patients taken to church. So now we have the outbreak. We're going to give them the reason for being now. The Ebola patients left a treatment center in the Democratic Republic of Congo after their families demanded they to take them to church, according to World Health Organization. Uh, two of their, in fact, the most useless organization and the most useless condition is the UN watching the, the disasters and doing nothing actually to stop any of it. Two of the patients later died, with the third returned to the center of the city of uh, Mbangdaka. Uh, these uh, present a new challenge for healthcare workers battling to stop the disease, the spread of the contagious disease. So here, here, Ebola has no known cure. There's the setup, folks. Here's, here's it's going to roll this thing out. Almost like, almost to plan. Well, they can't believe, believe it's not a plan into clockwork. Uh, they now give themselves a reason for being make work all on this uh, fiscal uh, condition of collateralized debt. And people are making money on disease, ve- disease spread. So uh, make of it as you will. Uh, the links will be in the, in the, in the uh, blogcaster if you haven't found it already. Um, Move over now from what the condition of the bottom line is, the global bottom line, how the World Bank and these uh, reconstruction things are set up in order to destroy nations, in order to build them up in the new normal, uh, and or do all the other things that they do for your security, of course. Uh, We make lots of things in local rules about our security and this and that, and it all ends up being a lie. It means hypocrisy. You see soon, if you're looking, you see immediately before it actually goes into place, it will be hypocrisy. It's really just to use a behavioral control, societal control structure. They don't actually intend to do reason with it. It's outcome. Again, no, it's all statistical, re- relation, uh, statistical presentation to, produ- to present and prove to you that it could work give enough evidence that it looked like it's probability it would work but no one stops to say but that probability is not meaningful we need we need something more more tangible we need reality well they won't go that far as soon as you stick a reality in the way it stops that's what we do the 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 land the land disposal law is a reality it's a grant it has all the it's all definitely been determined uh, the bright line it's the narrow path and there's nothing that can go around that that's why I keep telling you to find those things that you can that are uh, no question. You do not walk into a, a um, arbitration with a question. Uh, but northern Lebanon uh, students, I think this is Pennsylvania, uh, told 
to smile in half hallways while bullying gets ignored. These students have a new policy to file uh, to follow uh, that you, you can be given some kind of behavioral control uh, mechanism for not smiling in hallways. Now, to me, that is bullying on its face. And the argument, which shouldn't be an argument, the people are presenting, well, you're requiring us to smile in the, in the, in the hallway, but you're not, impo- you're not enforcing the bullying rule that we put in in 2012. It's not the kind of thing I'm saying you need to say. The you have to smile rule is absurd on its face. It's bullying. That is not to be worked, be, that's not supposed to be imposed because they start to impose the bullying rule. In other words, these are mutually exclusive. The bullying rule, given whatever it is to do, should have been in being enforced. Not that if you start enforcing it, we'll now be we'll now be smiling, forced to smile in the hallway. Number one problem. Number two, is that the people, the administrators of this. Well, let me read it. The Northern Lebanon School District High School principal Jennifer Hassler uh, uh, at a May eight and twenty twenty eighteen school board meeting. Hassler. Uh, assistant high school principal Ben Wegner and middle school principal Bradley uh, Reist are accused of throwing a sex toy around the administration office during school hours. Northern Lebanon School District students are required to smile while walking in the hallways between classes while bullying incidents are being ignored by administrators, according to some parents. Students who don't have a smile on their face while the hallways between classes are told to either smile or go see a guidance counselor to discuss their problems. Anyway, so here we have a, whatever was going on in the sex toy business in the office is not is not a, 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 um, addressed. No accountability. You're now required to smile, folks. I want to remind you about facial recognition cameras. Okay, let's build this out. This is what they're doing to your kids now in school. I don't know why you pe- people put their kids in this school, but neither here nor there. This is what's going on. You will smile, students, or you'll be, you will be determined that you have a problem, and you'll have to work it out with our counselor, an up-and-coming psychiatrist, of, to put, give you more drugs. I mean, let's go on and on about the discussion here. Students not smiling at school will be punished, says teachers, out of this another report. Think about this, folks. This is a rule that you will smile in a hallway or else. What was that? What was that China recognition? Uh, China. Let me bring that up right here. China. Remember, China was having the facial recognition. Remember, they were doing the debt society. Was really your debt to society was your. You are going to be a loyalist to the government. Remember that one? Let me bring that up right now. Right here. And and facial recognition. Fits better, I think. China's social credit system has blocked people from taking 11 million flights and 4 million train trips. Think about what people, kids in America, are being trained and conditioned to have to do when China is working out the problem, like Bitcoin. The masses are working out the problems for the uh, the technocrats. The China's on the leading edge of this. They're already implementing these facial recognition. They're already implementing social credit. That's going to be your Bitcoin, folks. That's going to be your blockchain. Your social credit, like you have a loan uh, money money loaning credit. That's what it's going to be also. But here they're already imposing. China is already imposing. If you don't smile all the time. You don't get to take that flight or get on that train to go to your destination, but it's worse. But this is you think that the China and, and America are different? You think that you got rights in this country? You think that it's not the way I've been saying? You live in a military country. You've been taken over as a people, and you're going to be driven where it's going to go unless you properly stand up in that environment and start to resist it? I've been talking about the cashless society. These phones are going to be your their concentrated evil. All this technology come to bear. And in these two stories, you have now students that have to smile with a a punishment, and China comes up to acknowledge uh, the reports are that you don't get to do things. You want to... We turn off your switch. It was in this article they'll say that the check will be that they can turn off your access 
to whatever you need to do is in China. Is the precursors you're watching to this thing that people want to argue that, well, you're not enforcing bullying as if you would accept. You can't smile. You have to smile when you do enforce the bullying. But this is being missed. The conversation in the news is the wrong conversation. And these two stories tell me that this is your future, those of you that will be there. And if you don't have the right thought, you don't say the right thing, you don't have the right look on your face, you will be demerited on your social blockchain. And that will be tied to how you exist, what you buy, where you go, how you get there. All these, you'll be secured, just like they're telling us. You think what I've been talking about in the United States and the method of consensus policy, which is imposing all this stuff, working through how the law gets subverted without you noticing is not the same thing that they're already doing in China. Already, folks, we were just talking about this just a couple of years ago. The social credit system in China has blocked people from taking more than 11 million trips and 4 million train trips. The social credit system is used to punish citizens for behavior with numerous blacklists, preventing them from traveling, getting loans or jobs, or staying in hotels, and even by limiting Internet access. China intends to roll out a more comprehensive, more comprehensive, national security credit system in 2020 boy with some hindsight here afford uh, which has gained comparisons to the show black mirror for those of you who might know what that is i don't they are mentioning here that you will be controlled you are behaviorally controlled by what the government is going to be imposing uh, you're seeing the connection all the way over into the United States right now with the little ones. They will be accepting of all of it. The argument is the government's not beating on the bully. That's not the argument. The government is the bully. And no one noticed that enough to say, stop. We don't want to become China. They ostensibly say this is to collect on judgments. I don't know how many people in my audience, how many of you know the other people with court judgments? I mean, how many, really, compared to the population? That this would be a thing, but this is the excuse. They also use this, eventually, your face gets put up on billboards uh, to show you that you're this, this socially uh, reprehensible creature. Is this getting too weird for you? I mean, I'm just looking through. It just, is this getting too weird for you? They're doing this stuff already. And then you hear that your students in Pennsylvania are required to smile in the hallway. How many demerit? Right now, it's just going to, you have a problem. You're going to go to our counselors. Pretty soon, the cameras come out and do a facial recognition. And you're going to be ordered to go to your counselor. Only that one's going to be one that gives you drugs. And now you'll be put on that on the bottom line. You'd be set up for the takedown and the, if you don't have the ability to be filtered through the middle class vent, which you just pay, 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 you're going to be put in prison, prison, prison. Pretty simple. And their ultimate goal is to be able to control you down to your last bit of ability to function in society. It's right here, folks. You don't have to go far. Uh, and uh, more. the more crickets I hear, the more infighting I hear, the more excuses I hear, uh, you, your, your, you folks, or your little ones, your, your family members in the future, are you're, you're watching their future life. You want to be a trends researcher? You're one right here. Get behind the woodshed. It doesn't take long. You see it right here. And those of you that are going to be arguing against it, you, those of you that think you're going to have to have a say, they're also showing us how that's not going to be a, a condition for you either. Uh, because no one does what they need to do. They do all the wrong things what they think they need to do. What used to be sufficient is no longer ad, uh, advisable nor functional. UK among the worst in Europe for free freedom of press after staggering decline. Now, I don't know about freedom of the press when you understand it's always already been, um, what do we call, it's already been a government monopoly. But, but notwithstanding that, people think there's this freedom of the press. And here what they're ta- here's what they're talking about. 
They're actually talking about the people that do speak freely about the conditions, that do report on what's going on. And they're stifling, they're uh, stifling that, they're muzzling, I guess I could say, media muzzling journalists. The UK is one of the worst countries in Western Europe for press freedom because of news media muzzling laws and a climate of hostility toward journalists in news reports found. Remember now, they're, they're murdering, Israel's murdering journalists, and their Supreme Court just said it's okay to shoot people over in Israel under the pretext that they're defending themselves. This is an occupier. This is an, a lawless occupier. You know it by their decisions. You know it by their deeds. But journalists are under attack. Journalists are, going, are, the, are the, the potential to out, finally out these things. And there's so many of us now that could be that they are now setting the groundwork uh, to, to stop this. And now we see clearly, uh, be reported, you don't have to go on opinion, the UK is the worst. Now what about the Queen here? She agrees to this. And you are known by your allies. The United States is an ally to this. And we are, the United States is no, no saint about its, its problems, about what it does to journalists either. You have to take cognizance of this condition. The, the, this is the last moments of being able to be able to be the word uh, uh, that you give to people. But Europe is no shining star. Uh, what else is going on in Europe about a journalist? Someone who provides information for your 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 use, if you want to. Uh, Ecuador prepares to hand Julian Assange over to UK, the country with the worst record about journalism. A country that turned around whose courts in another case, I think it was a computer hacking case, said they could not extradite the the, the charged individual who will be char- who will be uh, going to court in UK now. They couldn't extradite this uh, this party to the United States because of the immune inhumane condition of the prisons. But Ecuador is preparing to hand over Julian Assange. Whatever you think of him, I've told you I've got my apprehensions. I think that they're all different parts of a different PSYOP or same PSYOP. But notwithstanding that, given its journalistic condition, given the WikiLeaks is an information place to get information and to provide information, as a journalist, as a information center, it should be off limits to this type of persecution. But it's not. Ecuador is going to violate its constitution. It's going to violate its citizens. It's going to violate its uh, extradition clauses. It's going to violate every aspect. This president, Lenin, I send him, I send him uh, twitters. Amazing today, you can send these people things. Uh, asking him what, because he's supposed to be some uh, interested in humor and bringing disabled people out, uh, making humor uh, to help them and assist them in making their life m- more uh, more important. Well, who's more disabled right now than, than Julian Assange? It, now that he's been locked out, they're now going to their plan. Their the talk is right now they're going to hand Julian Assange to the UK. This is what's going on against journalism. This is going to be, this is what's going on to people that speak out. This is going to be part of your social credit history when you go to try and buy a bag of beans. Get a loan, get some gas, travel, travel down the road. This is all they're telling us what's coming up. Uh, the country's president uh, is not following the law. There's no constitutional republic in Ecuador at this point. This is expedience. This is the global condition I told you was coming and told to us was coming I told you because they told us if people didn't know where to look UK protesters flood the streets demand the release of imprisoned journalist Tommy Robinson another guy who's out there speaking uh, speaking his truth finding his stuff well they've uh, they they caught him on some kind of a a, a prior prior violation so called they sentenced him to 13 months because of the secondary, uh, because he supposedly violated his probation, the suspended sentence was imposed. He'd been put in jail. This is how they start wrapping you up. And so you start seeing how they do this should give you indications on how you're going to have to deal with this in the future. They're going to tend to wrap you up. 
uh, we've told uh, talked about the what the psychiatric type stuff where they they put the um, medic um, the uh, psychiatric hold on you. I haven't heard that here, but I'm saying this is the journalists, the people that are going to be speaking out are now being dealt, learned to be, they're learning how to deal with you, and not many people know how to respond. They're, the people are responding by demonstrating in the streets how, what, what can I say, how ineffectual is that? You're now seeing that you're going to have to step up. Uh, leaving the government people where they are to continue to do this is not going to stop and it's going to only perpetuate this. This is what we've been trying to say. Step up into something. Get involved somewhere. Replace these people with you to start with or someone that you know could replace them that may be in a better position to do that. Or in in politics, you you have to have some way to get in the office. So if you're not going to get a vote, don't run. Is my opportunity, uh, my, my observation. Find someone that can get a vote that will do what you, what, the way you think and the way you act. Uh, but going out and I told you, you, you can't go out in the street and it will be a, no effect. So that's all people are doing are protesting. The system doesn't care, and you can see in in Israel, you just get shot eventually. They just justify this lawless creatures just justify what they do. It's what. We said it earlier. It's necessity, folks. You're going to have to have a whole other thing coming at this to show how this is that's a pretext and how these things are setups. And in a way, I'm going to tell you what's come to my mind. Always looking for an opportunity and option. Given that the UK already committed itself that said that the hacker can't be extradited to the United States because of the inhumane condition of the jails. Folks, you have to understand, you you in America, you guys in the United States of America, think about that. That's where your court, that's your jails. You're going to go to inhumane keeping, you animals. That UK's already on the record that they can't extradite one guy for the reason. I'm hoping that this is the subtle little out that may happen for Julian Assange, given someone smart enough to pick it up. They can't, ex- they can't extradite him either. I'm hoping that's what's going on in the back background, that they're going to rationalize this thing out, uh, justify this condition so that nobody, uh, the backstabbing between the nations and the people, g- can't really have any force and effect. That's an optimistic view. They're doing dirt to people that are telling the truth. They're censoring people that are telling the truth. They are now... They are now... Um, showing you that they'll give you social credits which are really taking away your abilities. And and this is all going to be on a blockchain. I don't care care what you call it. It's going to be on a blockchain. And you're not going to be able to function without this infrastructure. Uh, The technocrat will have you. If you don't make counter to this and you don't stop the nonsense now, if you just sit back and think it's oppressive or you make the wrong argument like, well, if you would force the the bullying uh, law policy of 2012, we'd agree to help put a smile on our face. No, that's not the way this works. That's what they want you to do. If that's the outcome they want, you hand it over to them always. Uh, now, within the context of all these company, these companies, these countries that are working together, UK working with the United States, now we get UK saying, well, we you got inhumane courts, you got this surveillance going on. Remember earlier on I said the NSA and necessity and all this nonsense they put on us is that uh, is a fabrication in order to gain continued control and, and of and, and devaluation is another thing, debasing of your life. That's what they did with the gold. Uh, we now see an attack on government. When you get people in the government that look like they're working for the people, uh, they will be attacked directly. And we get a little bit of evidence of this. And this also speaks to uh, Kim.com, who is integral with the um, Snowden uh intercept and uh, Julian Assange thing although he's not a journalist that way uh, and, and you know I'm, I got problems with all of these all the, these you know the intercept and all that Glenn, Glenn Greenwald all these are, are questionable to me but the bottom line on the principle is the government the United States government wants all these all these jokers to well they call them jokers see they call them criminals 
They want these criminals, and they're going to do no law in order to get them. And that's what I think we've got to focus on. Well, when you're a government that's in one of these groups like Five Eyes, which is the National Surveillance, and you think everybody's an enemy combatant, in particular certain ones that are influential, and you, you give them titles like, you, you know, here, you're a joker, you're a criminal, you're a terrorist, whatever name they want to attach, and they come after you. If you're a government that was allowing it, and then you change the government, which is kind of neat about the shifting of a government, you get attacked. China's communist fund, Jacinta Ardern's Labor Party, what the United States Congress was told regarding the new New Zealand government that is now being tainted by a connection to an investment by the Chinese communists who were told whatever investment was, um, excuse me, contribution to a political party well, was done within the rules, we're told. What we're seeing is the United States attacking this new uh, independent government that wants to be independent of the, of the, of the uh, influence of the United States and start running their own, uh, their, their, their own condition. Uh, the United States attacks them. And it actually looks like they're attacking them in the wrong thing. They're threatening that they would lose their Five Eyes NSA connection. Well, actually, underneath the skin of it, that's not what's going on. But this is what the government will say in order to gain influence. And so now the, the Chinese are here, the dirty your mind, they're dirty, oh, they got bad, bad uh, connection to the, uh, to the, to the Chinese. That, uh, this must be a communist bad uh, government. And all we're looking at here is an independent government that doesn't want to be part of the uh, coalition, if you will, the coalition of plunderers. Not in that regard. And so we want to pay attention to how they're swinging this around, uh, how the Chinese, uh, the China problem uh, is playing into this, how China is the bad guy. And I'm not saying I'm not thinking it's a bad guy. They're all governments and they're all got their own, uh, uh, their own things. But I always find it interesting why is the United States allowing China to come in and buy up its minerals and, and, and pork companies. Remember, China bought the biggest pork producer, I think it's in North Carolina, uh, and they have a pork uh, demand even beyond that. And so why is the United States allowing all this if they're going to attack China through, attack New Zealand through this, uh, this alliance, uh, this contribution, uh, becomes something that you need to, to pay attention to, the, the lie about it. As we hear that Trump canceled that Singapore nuclear summit, and he starts waffling on that. You see this guy. I mean, what what kind of nonsense are we watching all here? Uh, this is a this is all a geopolitical game. Uh, but Trump did cancel that very important meeting, and then a couple days later, or so, maybe not even that, a couple days, he comes back and says, "Oh, we're trying to salvage it. We're still working behind the scenes." So this is a puppet. This is a this is a game of peace. Uh, it's very important that North and the South uh, work it out. Uh, and I was thinking, well, if they if Trump uh, called it off, those people should, those people should um, continue the meeting. And sure enough, see they're 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 grown up and they're diplomatic, and they agreed themselves. The, the North and the South made a secret meeting when the United States when Trump said he wasn't going to go play. Then Trump comes back and says, okay, well we're still work we're still in on it. And uh, so this is the kind of nonsense that you get from uh, any more the United States, maybe always. Uh, that you're getting from a lot of people, people that you vote for, uh, go in, they make a lot of promises, uh, in, and then they go into office and they say, "Well, what's that? Now that I'm in, now that I'm in, I've been voted in, I've had a change of mind. I'm not going to work in the direction I said I would." And so this is always the battlefield. This is the part of the problem. This is why one avenue is not always the good thing. Uh, if you have someone that you can get in office that you know that won't do that, fantastic. That's what you want to do. But be ready for these kinds of equivocations in people. Uh, there's lots of deception in all kinds of things and all manners of things. Uh, the United States of America should be taking a lead role. Trump should have been bigger than that than to be playing, you know, I'm going to take my ball and, and leave the, the, the playground. But he's not. And now we see the weakness, actually, that the United States is. We see it, the bully. That he is. This is Ozzy Skateboard, and you're listening to UCRide.tv. There is a point. Is there a point to all this? Let's find a point. Is this real? 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 
Brace your sister, Ryan. 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 Ry